You never say those words. You never get to say that's not fair. I've seen a lot of workhorses beat the talented kids. I love my family, but I love these kids in this gym. I feel like I was put on this earth that I have to change their lives through strength. We know what the iron did for us. It changed our lives, it gave us a life. There are the down times, there are the tough times, but the only way to get through those tough times is to keep going. We want to change lives, but man, it makes us feel so good because you're just helping somebody. And then like, what's better than that? This is how we do it, do it. This is how a kingdom comes. This is how we get it done. This is how we do it, do it. This is how a kingdom comes. This is how we do it, do it. Hey guys, welcome to Manasquan, New Jersey. This sounds like a tough name, doesn't it? Here to see my good friend, Zach Evan Esch. You know he's a, a great friend when he still uh, calls me Ronnie. We got into business at the same time, started training people out of a local park, out of his parents' garage, and uh, you know now he has the underground strength gym. And what I respect the most about him, he's not just a guy that, that, that paints the pretty picture every single time. He's, he's willing to share all the good, all the bad, and, and meet people around him. He's the kind of guy that gives you a shirt off his back. And I'm excited for you guys uh, that don't know Zach to meet him, uh, to see what he's all about. Just a, just a great guy, family man, uh, doing it all the right way. So excited for this episode. Ronnie Mac, what's up, man? Watch these trains. <laughs> Bring it on, man. Let's watch. go. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, bud. Finally awesome made it up you. here, man. The infamous, the infamous underground yeah. strength gym. This is it. This is one of the locations. This is about time, right? Yeah, about time. Absolutely. I'm excited to show you what we got going on awesome, in here. Awesome, man. Let's check it out. After you, my man. Another day, and we just trying to make a way now. The hatred growing stronger every single day now. I hear these rappers, they ain't trying to talk about it. They ain't trying to get involved, and they would rather catch a wave now. But how cool is the gun blade when the strays will hit the playground? Eh? All right, man. Hey, look at this place. This is it. So I'm seeing some vintage, man, I love it. Yes, this stuff is near and dear to my heart. You know, of course, the sandbags, the tractor tires, a little, it's kind of like a physical culture area here with the rings, the climbing rope. But the thing that's near and dear to my heart are these, you know, vintage iron plates, the history behind them. Right. This original York barbell, and then this sound <laughs> is just, <laughs> That's it. To me, it's beautiful. When I put my hands on those things, I, I legitimately feel like, who's feel been here? Who's yeah. had their hands on this? This gym is, on the surface, is strength and conditioning, but really it's about life. It's about being stronger in life. It's about being, you know, that relentless pursuit of excellence for your academics, your social life, your relationships. Sure. I can't coach and do that unless I'm trying to uphold my end as well. That's the way it should be, right? Right, exactly, and I like that pressure. So I want the walls to speak to the kids. When I started getting into the coaching is actually right about when my daughter was born and I was teaching and my work schedule was so crazy that it essentially escalated to a 6 a.m until 1 a.m. I remember days where I would wake up and, they, and I would go to work and she'd be asleep and my wife still sleeping in bed. And then I'd come home at 9, 9.30 and they'd be asleep. And I was like, man, like you can't pay me enough to keep missing this. And I had this one goal. And the one goal was I just want to have breakfast with my family. I still make breakfast every day for them. That's the thing is like that passion with me is sometimes very hard to uh, control or to kind of like lower the throttle on because I love my family, but I love these kids in this gym, but I feel like I was put on this earth that I have to change their lives through strength. And I always just look back to like, you know, my dad, he worked his face off to make sure that he could take care of the family. So did my mom, operating room nurse, you know, standing all day. And what my grandfather did, what my grandparents did, 
So that work ethic to me has always been like the answer. When you need to get better, work smarter, get more work done in less time, do the work versus come up with the excuses. And I still remember my grandfather, he's like, you know, Zach, I worked the night shift at the cement factory and then I would come and build the sidewalk. And you know, your father and your uncle couldn't keep up with me. That's it, and he was, he was a tough guy. And if I could be an ounce of that, you know, I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. So when I first started training athletes out of my parents' garage, training with stones, training, you know, with uh, all used equipment from newspaper classifieds, and you know, the challenge of course was at that time, if you didn't have your polo shirt tucked in and you weren't standing on a physio ball, you were wrong, <clears throat> you know, you were wrong and I was as wrong as they could be. That was my challenge was, how do I fit into this when my heart tells me this is not me? I was a guy that was in love with golden era bodybuilding with that old school black and white photos of the bodybuilders of the 60s and 70s, training with free weights. My mind was thinking of early days, world's strongest man, late 70s, early 80s, guys throwing kegs, being resourceful. See this white house here? This is where I grew up. I used to run these stairs. I, the kids would train in this driveway, right in the bottom of the sidewalk. That garage was so little, but they would lift in the garage, we'd be in the backyard. I'd make them run the stairs up and down my parents' front yard. The first house that my uh, wife and I bought, it took a year of um, revamping the entire house. We had to gut everything, ceilings, walls, pipes, everything. But I had the garage redone first and I trained athletes out of the garage for a year before we lived in it. This was the house. And this is where I train kids. Two car garage, that's all I wanted. Two car garage. We would do farmer walks across the street, up the street. I would leave those two garage doors open. We'd go in the backyard, climb rope, carry tree logs. It was like a military training background. To me, that's always the biggest lesson is like teaching him that just if you do your best, you know, it's that old school John Wooden quote, winning is an internal game. Like it's not just about the points on the board. He told them, you guys could beat a team by more points, but if you didn't play your best, you didn't win. I say, Ethan, daddy's just telling you to work hard because that's the ticket. I always tell him like, dude, that's, that's what it's gonna take. My whole thing with him is just effort. Right. You know, across the board. And that's, you know, maybe an old school mentality we've got as coaches and just the way we were raised. But I think now more than ever, that, that could take people further. Right. And uh, he's learned so much from wrestling that carries over to baseball. And I like that, you know. I actually look back to my wrestling in high school. And I feel like I just take everything I learned from that wrestling room and apply it to everything. You want to be a better husband? Work harder. Right. <laughs> that was like the answer. You want to be a better wrestler? Go run at night. It, I've seen a lot of workhorses beat the talented kids. And um, hey man, I always say I'm like, I'm partial to that. I love the workhorses. That's what most coaches were, right? Most coaches were. Most yeah. coaches were, yeah. I've heard you say that before. Like I was not a great athlete. I needed more mentoring. I needed more time. I needed everything that I'm doing for all these kids. That's what I needed. And I guess knowing that is why I'm okay to, I'm okay to sometimes be tough on them. And I, I wouldn't even say I'm a tough dad, but sometimes I do. But I, but I'm okay. I'm like come to terms with it now that it's okay to be a little bit tough on them. Thanks, brother. And uh, I think they're cool with it too. But I found that by getting kids strong through the push-ups and the pull-ups and the sprinting and then the confidence they felt. People got along better and they respected one another. And I could see the transformation week to week with eye contact, firm handshake, put five pounds extra on that trap bar. You just broke a record or you're getting driven to this gym. 
bro, jog here, it's five minutes. They come in, they're like sweating, they feel like a million bucks. And then the, the phone call or the text message from a parent saying, you know, my son, we own a pool in the backyard. He never took his shirt off in his life. He, he's, he walks around without that shirt off all the time now. And he's, you know, socializing with people. And to me, it's like, wow, that's real strength. We had a kid here, this was awesome. Like he became a class president. I would love to see, you know, strength coaches, qualified strength coaches taking places like this and we could implant them in the schools and it becomes part of the curriculum. You know, physical education completely evolving. It would be so tremendous for people because even when I train adults, sometimes I communicate with them I'm like, wow, this guy's 45, but he's still that shy and insecure 15 year old because nobody coached him up to believe in himself. So I started realizing that, you know, the gym is so much more of a, it's not a vehicle for sports. Yeah, it's great. I want to see you get a scholarship, but I love seeing you take that and then apply it to academics, to your social life. Then you apply it to your, uh, you know, to your career path. You can't compartmentalize your excellence to your football or to your wrestling. You've got to go excellence in all those things. And, uh, you know, I always say as coaches, like, we want to change lives, but man, it makes us feel so good because we're like, ah, we're, you're just helping somebody. And then like, what's better than that? Man, this has been awesome, brother. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome time. Brother. I'm, I'm a little depressed that it has to end. I hear you, brother. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, first of all, your passion is is off the charts man and what you're what you do how you do it it's, it's incredible you're humble you're hungry you're just a genuine dude that, that wants to make a difference in his family's life and his community and and just uh you're doing it on a daily basis so hats off to you you're it's the only way to do it right you're, you're a stud brother i appreciate you i appreciate so much, you guys man. so much man it's been awesome ronnie Talk thanks to you later, my buddy. man talk to you soon see you soon see you man later ronnie What an awesome day, guys. Zach is such an incredible guy. I mean, the guy just oozes passion in everything that he does, be it his family, be it his business, be it his community. He just puts his heart and soul into everything he does. Uh, you can't help but feel uh, incredible just hanging out with the guy for, you know, 24 hours, feel recharged to kind of attack this profession. But appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for future episodes of, of Beyond the Chalk. We really appreciate those of you that like, share, comment, just helps us continue to highlight the great people that we have in the profession. And I was struggling with what is this gym in that, you know, like teeter totter point with, you know, living in a town that half this town got destroyed from Hurricane Sandy, trying to build another gym while the economy gets destroyed, losing half my gym. My kids just gave me the strength to not be weak. You don't have the time to be weak. You gotta, you've gotta move forward. So to me, I always tell my kids, you know, I say, I go, you know, you guys inspire me to be better at everything. I just got to think of you, and then I want to be better at everything. And can I go back and tell them, this is how I work today? Did I make you proud? Did I not make you proud? Now, I ain't perfect. I always say that we're human, but I just, if I work, I feel like that can make them proud.